So today I want to be showing you how I'm putting together my blow through E85 4150 double pumper. So as some backstory, we're starting with a 750 CFM double pumper. Um, the reason we're doing this is it's cheaper than uh, fuel injection as far as you know hardware and parts. Um, you get better fuel cooling from uh, latent heat of evaporization. And, um, you know, this is going to be cool. E85 and boost. So, there's a couple things that really makes this work. Um, we're going to use nitrofill floats because, um, unlike the brass ones, these won't collapse when the float bowls are pressurized under boost pressure. And, uh, another trick piece is we're going to be using quick fuel E85 metering blocks and uh, we're going to be using jet extensions in the secondaries. Um, what really makes this work is we're going to be using a boost reference power valve and uh, the way this is made isn't original but I've typed an article of how I did this and uh, I'll link that in the description but I'm going to be running a uh, 6.5 power valve the primary which is just completely normal and then uh, our custom boost reference power valve and then we'll be running high flow needle and seats this is a titanium set needle and seats and then uh, these 50 cc accelerator pumps um, just so we can get more fuel in there and uh, that's pretty much it um, as far as uh, main body modifications. We really didn't do anything. The biggest thing we did was we uh, cut off the choke. Um, you can leave this choke tower on there. It's not necessary to remove it. You need to re remove the choke blade at least. But um, you get more airflow, and um, that's really really what I was going for in the first place, anyways. So the first thing we're going to do is I already have the um, pump arms and stuff on there. That's pretty self-explanatory. It's not really anything that I think needs uh, gone over again. But um, the biggest thing when installing the uh, main body onto your throttle blades is making sure you have the right gasket first of all and making sure you line up your um, vacuum ports on the body to this. So it will snap down into position and then we have six screws that go around the perimeter. Now we got this going, so let's just set this back down for a second. Okay, now we're going to turn our attention to installing the float and the float bowl. So, it's pretty self explanatory. You're going to sit in there. Installed. So let's move on to installing the accelerator pump. Now, something this is the older style check ball type, and uh, you don't we don't have those umbrella seals, so we don't have to worry about those. The biggest thing is making sure that this um, passage is clear, and uh, for us it is, so we're going to go ahead and install um, our accelerator pump. Now, there's two different springs. 
So be mindful of your 30cc spring and your 50cc spring. The 50cc is obviously bigger. So, let's go ahead and start installing our needle and seat. Now once we get start getting these in there, we're going to be holding this upside down, trying to get the float to hang in the middle just to give us, um, just get the car running and uh, give us an initial tuning point. That's about right in the middle. So we'll tighten down this jam nut. That side's good. Let's do the same thing this side. Now let's look into um, installing our metering blocks and power valves. Now I have this flipped around, but another modification that I made was I ground flat this vacuum port because this side's going to have the jet extensions. So being able to get that float ball off for our ine inevitable tuning with jet sizes will become necessary. So. Um, and these power valve restrictors, um, often these change, you need to size these appropriately. Um, Hangar 18 has some great info on that. But um, you don't always need to do that. And uh, I've seen people run these metering blocks successfully leaving the stock bleeds in. So we're gonna do that for now and we can change them later. On the secondary side, we're gonna be putting in our boost reference power, power valve. We have the seal and everything ready to go. So we're just gonna put it in there. So now we have that snug down, we do the same thing on the other side, only we're using a standard power valve. So now we can put the uh, metering box onto the main body. So you want to use the gasket supplied with the quick fuel um, blocks because they are resistant to ethanol corrosion. So we have our bolts with our seals. Um, at this point we're just assembling the carburetor. This is no different than any gas or alcohol carburetor. Um, nothing special. On the secondary side, now like I said before, um, we are I ground down this the top of this vacuum port. Um, typically, this is for like a brake booster, um, so we could get our jet extensions and be able to get the uh, uh, float bolt off. Now, um, something to keep in mind is that our floats are notched, so uh, these won't interfere with it. So we're gonna get these guys on there. going 
want to get our hardware started. And now we're going to put our um, accelerator pump uh, squirters in. So before you do that, you have to put in um, this basically spike looking thing. And uh, so you put that in there to this hole. And then this one has one in it. Um, put that guy in there. I if that's in there. Warranted. And then um, uh, get your gasket, put it on there, and uh, that's much it. Nothing special. Okay, the very last thing we have to do is to put in our flippable side plugs. Now you can use the clear plastic ones, but they swell and you can never get them back in there or they just leak from the start. Um, they're, they are quite the pain. And once you set your float level, you shouldn't really have to adjust it again. So. There we have it. We have one E85 blow through ready carburetor. Ready for boost.